Oh, that's that. Okay, hi guys. Thanks for spending your evening with us, your Wednesday evenings with us. So maybe we'll give it about like another five minutes for the rest of scoring. Um, you know, meanwhile, do log on to our uh Google Collab to, to take a look. Lah. Yeah. So uh just sit back and yeah, enjoy. Hello. Thank <laughs> you. 
Thanks, thanks, thanks. Yeah. Thanks. 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 Wait, this is my first time using the, the mic, so if it's too loud, just download it. Okay? So thanks for spending your Wednesday evening with us. We are learning about ChatGPT. So for those who just came, you could log on to the link here. Uh, maybe I'll just write down on the board because that was one of the suggestions that you all have. Yeah, and it will lead you to this uh, Google Collab overseas. Okay, uh, uh, I have one day to finish this presentation. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So for those who are new here, um, normally we will like our workshops on this platform called Google Collab. So Google Collab is just like a Python but in a notebook format, which allows us to uh, we all write down some comments alongside with our code. So uh, once you go to uh, Google Collab, just click on the file tab. And go to save a copy on drive. Okay. Um. Yeah. You won't be able to edit like our our instructors. You know the original file. So don't worry. Okay. Let's see. It's going to continue. Oh, how do I on the video? Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Nice. Okay, yeah, so welcome to our Hacker School Workshop. This is our third Hacker School Workshop of the semester on exploring ChatGPT. So I think uh, we are very cautious with you know the naming of our workshop. So instead of calling it Introduction to ChatGPT, we call it Exploring ChatGPT because uh, unlike the previous two workshops where we have people who have already sort of done open, uh, done open CV, done computer visions for some time, uh, ChatGPT is something very new. So probably like I just know ChatGPT uh, just a little bit more than y'all, but uh, I've done a little bit more research now. So I guess, you know, in this workshop, we are all exploring this together. So I guess it will be quite a, a fun session for us. So, you know, um, just looking around, I see some familiar faces. I see some new faces also. So just a little bit of self-introduction for myself. Uh, my name is Chun Yong. I'm a year three computer science and statistics student. And this is my telegram. Yeah. So my interest uh, in NES hackers is to reach out to other faculties to share computing skills to non-computing students uh, and you know non-computing peers. Uh. So you know if um, you are in a club and you wanna you know sort of link up with NES hackers, uh, do reach out uh, to me by my telegram. Okay. So yeah, um, you know. To just to introduce NUS hackers again for those who are new, our goal is always to spread the hacker culture. So sometimes, you know, like this term has been, you know, our mantra has always been like overused. So you may ask, like, it actually means what, right? So the hacker culture for us is, you know, to build things, to tinker around, um, and just to discover, you know, what we can do with, you know, just computing in general. So why do we do this? Number one is because it's very fun, right? So we have a sense of accomplishment when we build something that is new, when we build something that's very interesting. And a little bit more philosophical, you know, we want to build new things so that we can discover new possibilities. So like for example, you know, ChatGPT is, is something uh, that we consider a new possibility, right? Yeah, and this is only possible because people started to tinker around and play around with things. And you know, ta -da, we have such an amazing product now, okay? So uh, yeah, this is what our club stands for, to spread the hacker culture. So right now, you are in uh, one of our uh, sort of branch of uh, uh, one of our projects of NS Hackers called Hacker School. So uh, just a brief recap, you know, you are here to you know, get started on programming and building stuff. Normally, we cater our workshop to new computing students and also people from non-computing backgrounds. And you know, we encourage you to start your own project 
So today, definitely you have the time and space to you know, try something on your own. So this is not like a coding bootcamp where you become an expert overnight. Uh, this is more of an interactive hybrid workshop. So if you are here for the previous two workshops, uh, you'll realize that you know, um, we are introducing a lot of concepts and you know you might not have uh, a lot of time to play around you know uh, open cv yourself but i promise you you know for this workshop there'll be uh, a lot more hands-on time that's allocated for you all so you can stay tuned okay so for today's workshop objective uh it's a little bit big but uh, uh just let me share the idea of how we come up with this so i'm pretty sure each of us have different experience level with programming and different level of understanding what ChatGPT is. So we'll first start off by learning how ChatGPT works. And uh, then we'll discover some of the available ChatGPT APIs, which are basically interface that you can sort of uh, interact with ChatGPT. And finally, it will be your turn to explore some simple projects that you can play with ChatGPT. Okay? Yeah. So yeah, this is our outline. We'll first start off with our intro. Then we'll talk about some of the API options and then we can integrate uh, ChatGPT with our project. So number two and number three, um, I plan to do it a little bit more like overlapping because now it's like evening time in Singapore, but it's like morning time in the US, Canada. Um, so I realized that, you know, ChatGPT can be overloaded at times. So uh, let's be flexible and yeah, just uh, play by ear. Okay, so what is ChatGPT? Okay. So first, maybe just a show of hands, you, you see these four uh, acronyms there, AI, ML, NLP, LM. Okay, just a show of hands, how many of you are familiar with what AI is? Anybody? Oh, ah, no, yeah. no, they know what, what AI is. Huh? So if I ask, what is AI? Can anybody say what is AI? Oh, huh? Do I have a... Oh, I don't want to go, though. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. So then, um, does anybody know what ML is what does ML stands for? Okay, who knows what ML stands for? Let the shout Machine learning. Okay, I hear machine learning. Okay, good job. Okay, machine learning. Correct, correct, correct. Then what about NLP? What does NLP mean? Natural <laughs> language processing. Okay. Then finally, what does LLM mean? LLM. Okay, LLM is um a little bit more technical. Huh? Yeah, so I'm pretty sure, you know, in this class here, we come uh, with a uh, different experience level. So some of us may have taken some uh, CS modules on AI, uh, which is, I don't know, 3 to 4 3. Yeah, and, uh, you know, some modules on ML, 3 to 4 4, or NLP, right? But I know some of you may not come from, uh, you know, computing background. Lah. So we'll all first start off, you know, by introducing how does ChatGPT work? So as we mentioned in our first workshops, okay, we all had a fundamental understanding that computers are very good with numbers and calculations. So I think it's not very foreign to say that, you know, no, I mean, it's not very foreign if I introduce the idea that computers sort of run on a binary system, zeros and ones, and basically how we interpret these numbers will, you know, allow computers to do calculations on it. Lah. Yeah. So the next understanding is, when we are able to represent real world problems with numbers, we can build an artificial intelligence system. So artificial intelligence, uh, like a, uh, just generally, it just means that using computers to sort of mimic how humans sort of uh, reason about things and, uh, you know, human intelligence, basically. So um, we have weak, general and strong AI. So this is a scale that says that for example, if your AI is just meant to solve a very specific problem, like for example, a tic-tac-toe or a chess AI, then I'll consider it a weak AI. But if we can have an AI that can, like, uh, like ChatGPT or something like that, that can solve a lot of different various problems in a very general sense. So, uh, I mean, just a colloquial, you know. So if you have an AI that can do everything, then we consider it a strong AI. Okay, so what this means is basically um, testing whether the AI is generaliz generalizable. Okay, so what is machine learning? So machine learning is actually a subset of AI. So when computers are able to draw on past data to make predictions, so it's one step further, 
where we use parse data to continuously um, you know, like improve our predictions, we are conducting machine learning. And machine learning, we can also classify in a whole spectrum. Okay, I wouldn't say it's a spectrum different categories. So that's supervised, unsupervised, and reinforcement learning. So I'm sure like uh, most of us, or maybe some of us, uh, come from um, you know JCs where we learn in math about uh, you know correlation and regression. So for example, your best speed line, I'm sure best speed line might be familiar to many of you. Yeah, is classified under supervised learning, right? And you know, unsupervised learning can be things like categorization, where we initially don't know uh, how the data looks like, but after putting it in your computer, it helps to uh, make sense out of it. Yeah. So there are some other things that you might have heard before, like logistic regression, like uh, things like uh, you know neural networks, you know, yeah, which are part of this area umbrella of uh, machine learning. Okay, then what is natural language processing? So after AI, we learn, we talk about AI, we talk about machine learning. So natural language processing is a subset of machine learning. So now we want to feed data to the computers, right? We talk about in point three, but what if we feed computer with text and we train it to decipher? So for example, if I train the computer to, um, you know, talk about grammatical rules. So if I tell the computer that, oh, in English, actually we organize our sentence by subject, object, subject, verb, then object, right? And we train it to decipher and try to reason out what are words that are important, what are words that are not important. We conduct natural language processing. And finally, we have uh, large language modules. So, um, you know, as humans, sometimes we want to take the easy way out, right? So for uh, machine learning, actually, um, the end goal is to create models, right? Uh, from our from our data, right? So, uh, large language models are just natural language processing models that produce text. And the thing about these models they, is that it's very sensitive to the data that we feed in and how we feed those data. Yeah. So, you know, it's a very trial and error kind of task. So, um, traditionally, you know, nowadays, many of the big companies like Google, Microsoft, OpenAI create those pre-trained uh, large language models. And now we have been using it. So instead of creating them from scratch, we are just refining those uh, LRMs that um, bigger companies have already produced. And ChatGPT is based on one of them. So ChatGPT is based, uh, is based on this uh, LRM called uh, GPT 3.5, if I'm wrong. Yeah. So yeah, it's very interesting to see you know, how things have evolved. So yeah, so this is just a short summary of how ChatGPT works. I won't go into uh, much detail. Or maybe during the break, if you're curious to know more, you could uh, hit me up. Lah. Okay. So now uh, I'm pretty sure some of you might not have uh, set up ChatGPT yet. Or um, you know, let's just test if ChatGPT is working. So if you're free, you know, just uh, head up to uh, ChatGPT and see if it is working. Okay. All right. So I'll, I'll do the login process with you all. Yeah, so when you all are on this page, just press login. Then um, if it's your first time logging in, you might have to you know, verify your, 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 what, with your phone number or something. Oh yeah, if you all need a link, I write it on the board. Okay. Okay. Oh yeah, before I continue, yeah, I haven't introduced two of my fellow Hackers brothers here who will be helping us, you know, with today's session. So may I invite you know, Richard and Paul to introduce themselves. Hello, um, Richard, uh, ASCS, and I'll be going on how to guide you guys. Yeah, and I'm Paul, ESCS as well. Um, we've been organizing the past two Hackers School sessions as well. Yeah, cool, cool. So if you have any questions, because today's workshop um, is relatively interactive, if you have any questions, um, just feel free to 
So, uh, you know, just uh, approach us or any of us. Okay. Yeah. So, log in. Yeah, don't worry. Uh, my password, I'll, I'll change my password. So, yeah. So, after login, after you log in, whoa, it's working now. Yay. You'll see a prompt like this. Okay. So, oops. Yeah, for those who are already done, you could actually play around with it. But for those who are not done yet, you know, uh, I'll give you all a little bit more time. Yeah. So just to check, uh, just to check how many of you are already done. You can give me a thumbs up. Anyone? The table, the table. Okay, very good. Anybody need more time? Can raise your hand. Okay, need more time, need more time. <laughs> okay, can uh, Need more time. Uh? Mm. Yes. Okay, very good. So just to um while we are waiting, I could show you all some of the interesting things that uh I have thought of. Yeah. So not sure how many of you are taking intro to AI, but maybe I can uh, ask this question. So I want to, for example, now my task is to write a tic-tac-toe solver. All right. So I can ask ChatGPT, write a mini max algorithm to tic-tac-toe. Actually, I tried it before, it's actually very uh quite good laugh. Tic tac toe. Actually, it can give me code. Eh? Actually, I'm very impressed. All right. Yeah. They can give me the whole entire code. Yeah. They can even like sort of support the case where you know your your players are switching. Why why again? Okay. 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 Oh, impressive, right? Yeah. Um, actually, this uh, this is one of the mini projects that I did. Um, I was I'm very surprised to see you know how complete the, the code is now. Sometimes it might not be hundred percent. Might not be hundred percent. Yeah, it might not be complete sometimes, but yeah, it works. Yeah, so this is one example for those who are studying uh, uh, CS. Uh, and the other example uh, while we are waiting is uh, write an introduction for intro to chat GPT. Yeah, interesting. Okay, so let's see. Huh? Hey, wow, how come so long? I think. Yeah, write an intro introduction to the workshop. Oh, GG. Nope. Yeah, actually, it's quite robust. Uh, and if y'all didn't know, you know, when we actually sent out the uh, in invitation, the sign up form uh, for ChatGPT, uh, whatever is written there is actually generated by ChatGPT. Yeah. So, fun fact if y'all scroll your Telegram, uh, the, the intro, right, it's actually written by ChatGPT. Yeah, so quite interesting, right? Okay, but the, uh, definitely this is not the whole main crux of our workshop. Lah. Okay, so uh, anybody need more time to sign in? Uh, yeah, to sign in? No, calling once, calling twice? Okay, never mind. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. So uh, now that we have um, sort of uh, logged in into ChatGPT, remember your username and I mean, sorry, your email and your password. We will need that to, um, you know, play around with our API data. Okay, so I'm pretty sure, like, um, most of you here are uh, not really here to experiment the web, you know, the, the website, what we can do with it. But mainly, you know, your question might be, oh, actually, how can I integrate ChatGPT into some of the projects that I want to do? Maybe I want to create like a translator. You know, then how can I integrate you know, ChatGPT into uh, this mini project that I want to do? So I'm here to introduce you some uh, APIs that we have here. All right. So uh, if you take a look at OpenAI slash API, all right, um, 
there is the official API for ChatGPT. It's a very nice website. Yeah, but um, you know, back then, if I'm wrong, it's back then. I don't think now have. Okay, you can take a look whether uh, for those who just created your account, whether you still have an eighteen dollars, uh, eighteen US dollars free credit for uh, ChatGPT. But unfortunately for my account, I think there's no more free trial. So uh, reset lah. Um, every time you know I have to uh, make a request by calling their API, I have to pay. Yeah, so it's quite sad. But I learned from CS2103. Yeah, how many of you have taken 2103 already? No, no? Okay, never mind. Yeah, so I learned about this platform called GitHub. I learned about GitHub. So if you look on the right, I just do a simple search on Google called uh, Chat GPT API GitHub. And I saw this whole list of search results. And these search results actually give me uh, some very interesting work by some of our open source community members, where actually they sort of reverse engineer the uh, ChatGPT website to create an API of their own so that we can uh, sort of have the results, you know, just like an API, but uh, in a little bit more hacky way. Huh? Okay. But uh, just to make it clear that as NUS hackers, we you know, do not condone any form of piracy at all, but we are all for supporting the uh, spirit of uh, open source. Okay, so yeah. Okay. So um, I encourage you all to take a look at this uh, GitHub uh, repository okay, by this um, uh, very, very nice guy to take a look. Yeah, uh, maybe I will just go through this report with you all. Yeah, so it's by this uh, very nice, very nice uh, community member who actually reversed the ChatGPT uh, website in order to create his own API. Yeah, so if you can see the latest update is two hours ago, so it's pretty updated, so it's pretty cool. And if you see like the number of, um, what is it? The number of uh, forked projects, so basically like downstream projects that he uh, inspired is 2.5K, okay, interesting. And 16.5k uh, people are actually following this. So if you are interested to have, uh, you know, find an open source API, um, do look up for this uh, project. So what's interesting is there's version one and version two, but as far as I checked, uh, version two API is still broken. So uh, we'll be playing around with version one API today. Okay. So um, yeah, uh, just to share again you know, how this API works um, briefly is, is that, um, you know, using the website that I saw just now, they basically found a way to sort of script the results so that we actually can, um, you know, just using our code, you know, just send in, a, uh, send in a query and they have like sort of nicely formatted the results for us. Okay, so we'll explore that later. Lah. Yeah, so yeah, just to show you all this uh, project to take note. Yeah. So one of the, um, the good things, uh, some of the good things about this API that I see is that you know, it's updated very regularly and it's uh, quite popular within the community. You know? But one of the bad things is that you know, you'll be passing in your credentials to uh, this library. Um, so as a computer security person, you know, as a computer security student, you know, I'll say, please be careful when passing your credentials through an uh, untrusted API. Yeah, so for me, you know, later I'll be sharing some of my credentials. Yeah, but you know, I'll be you know, um, you know, it's just a throwaway anyway. So yeah, okay. So for those who haven't uh logged on yet, please go to our Google Collab. I hope everything in the code is working. Yeah. Um. So if there's any problem, uh, you can just consult uh, uh Asla. Yeah, and our friendly hackers here also. Okay. Oh, no confusion. Okay, first I'll save a copy. Yeah, and we'll go through this file together. For those who are still not familiar with uh, Google Collab, uh, no worries. I'll introduce how it works. So basically, in um, for Python notebook for those who are um, you know this is your first time using it, um, you know you could write code or you could write text. 
So our first comment, uh, our first block is actually a descriptor box where we you know, write down our various descriptions. Um, and our next box is actually a code block where if you press the start button, this, this arrow button, you could actually run that code block. Okay, so the first thing we'll do, oh, I think I should zoom in. All right, first thing we'll do is to download our dependencies. So um, firstly, we'll download the API that we mentioned just now. And secondly, we'll download um, our API for Telegram. So we will be playing around with uh, how to integrate ChatGPT and uh, Telegram together, okay? So yeah, can just uh, click run and you know when it start running when like this button here has stopped rotating. Yeah. So anybody have any questions at this point? Anybody have problems at this point? No, no? Okay, yeah, nice. Okay, so next uh, we will just do our regular imports. So as mentioned, we'll just do the version one, all right? Uh, yeah, of our chatbot, okay? So here is the part where I need, you know, your, your uh, input. So type down the email and the password that you have written just now, okay? So for me, I'll type down my email and I will type down my password, okay? And I'll save it in our variable here, okay? And if you notice, actually ChatGPT has a very nice typewriter style of um, you know displaying their text right so as we generate like this text actually it sort of sort of like generates bit by bit right so actually the author of this um, API had this in mind he also wanted the same thing in Python um, but you know the implementation seems to be buggy but right now we can implement this ourselves okay so if you run this code uh, what this code actually uh, does for us is like is that it will give us a very nice your format like our message very nicely lah. okay which you'll see later so uh now for the next code we are passing our login credentials to start a new conversation with chat gpt okay this might be a part where some of you might face some error especially if the the chat gpt sort of server has like a like an overloading kind of thing yeah so yeah do take note okay and finally, we'll send a query to our ChatGPT bot. So what this is doing here is I'll send my query hello, and I will just send my query and um, print it in the ChatGPT style, right? And we'll get something like this. Okay, all right. So congratulations if you have uh, run this for yourself. You have uh, managed to import, you know, or like basically translate the chat GPT style of like, you know, query and response into Python, okay? So if any of you uh, cannot get this to work, um, yeah, do, do inform us uh, straight away, lah. okay? And I know some of you uh, might say, wow, well, actually this one, um, you know, is not very good programming practice. Never mind, okay? I encapsulate it into a class for you, okay? So now uh, I have written a chat GPT class where I have uh, all our essential functions here. Lah. Yeah. Yeah, um, definitely some of the codes, uh, if you trace the code, might look a bit weird, especially the, the send query uh, code. Lah. But um, it's just some of the design decisions that the API maker has made. Lah. Okay. And finally, we can send our query. Okay. Wow, okay. Yeah. Okay, Ken. So now I'll share some of my personal use cases, right, for this um API, right, that is relevant to um you know some of the issues that I faced so far in my uni life. Yeah. Um I know in the sign up form you all have shared you know some of the, the wishes and the interest. Uh, or some of the things that you want to see and I've incorporated um, some of your ideas into uh, my use cases also, okay? So I'll share three use cases. Number one, I will try to make a translator. Number two, I'll try to make Grammarly. And number three, I'll try to make a code optimizer, okay? 
Okay. So this is how I'll do things, okay? So number one, I'll try to make a translator. So I'll first start off with my problem statement. Okay. So my problem statement is, you know, personally, I'm taking a uh, language module, I'm taking Korean. And as we know, and as we know, like Chinese and Japanese, Korean has a lot of nuances, which is not captured by the English language. So for example, if we just use Google Translate, right, and we just throw in the text there, it might not capture all of um, you know, what we want to say, which can be actually taken from our context. But we know that ChatGPT has this very interesting function that can remember and sort of account for the context um, within the text itself and also within the whole entire conversation. So that means that if maybe ChatGPT could be a better translator. So um, there is this uh, Redditor who made a, a mini evaluation. Uh, you can take a look at it, where he tried to um, compare three different texts, which are um, more difficult to translate. Yeah, I'm gonna zoom in. Yeah, so he tries to, he tries to translate jokes, um, social media posts, and uh, what is it, colloquialism? Yeah, so you know he sort of evaluated the the strengths and limitations of ChatGPT lah. So yeah, this is what I'm basing on. So my solution, um, which is okay, I'll have to say that the solution is what I think works for me. Um, you know, I guess you know things like this is like pretty much trial and error. You know what works, what doesn't work, especially because we are dealing with a machine learning model. So as I mentioned just now, machine learning is a lot of trial and error, you know, depending on what's your input, it you know, sort of influence what your output is like. So the, the sort of template of how I will go about doing it is my, uh, the first step, I'll provide context to ChatGPT, say what I want to do. ChatGPT can reply us with a lot of different things, but my goal is to tell ChatGPT, I want to translate this text from this language to that language. So ChatGPT knows that, oh, actually, this is like the sort of like context that we are working on now. Then the second step is to tell it even more information about, um, you know, what kind of other things should I expect? So in this case, um, the whole uh, crux, the whole essence, why I want to build this translator is because on Google Translate or on like the Korean version of Google Translate called uh, Papago, it's very hard for them to sort of translate, you know, or work with different formality levels. So, you know, I want to incorporate that. And third step is to translate my text. So if you can see, what I'll do is I build my own class of translators using the chat GPT, um, you know, class that I built just now, all right? And I can actually run my translator and we just run these few screens. It can give me exactly what I want. Oops. Hopefully everything is okay. Yeah, then you can give me exactly what I want. Oh. Oop. Oh, by the way, uh, um, for those who are using my credentials, uh, try not to, because I can see whatever that you put inside. So that's a privacy concern. Yeah. Okay. Mm, I, I saw someone, yeah, need help. All right. The error message that is saying one message at a time mm. is written inside the library or it's actually uh yeah, very good question. So actually, um there are many different types of error, and this error actually comes from chat GPT itself. Oh yeah. So this is something that I realized quite recently also. All right. Okay, now it's working. Okay. So yeah, congratulations. So using the simple class that I've made, I have sort of built a very simple, very rudimentary uh, translator that can help me when you know I'm doing my my Korean modules uh, Yeah. So I'm not sure how useful this will be, but at least it's a step in the right direction. Okay. So while I wait for this to load, uh, while I wait for this to load, yeah. Uh, I'll go through the other examples first. All right, then later I'll, I'll, I'll just go through now. So my second use case is I want to make a proof reader in other languages. So as you know, Grammarly is a very established 
uh, proofreader, but it's only available in the English uh, in the English language. So this uh, shuts it off when we want to proofread, for example, our our Chinese, our Zhouwen, I don't know how. Huh? But fret not, we have discovered just now that ChatGPT is robust to support different languages. So we also know that ChatGPT gives us uh, quite grammatically accurate responses, even though you know the content might be a bit sus at some times, right? But actually, this still gives us the idea that hey, could ChatGPT, um, you know, be a group proofreader like Grammarly, right? So the solutions follow the same step. I tell ChatGPT what I want to do first. I want to proofread my text. Then second step, I indicate any specific preference that I want. And the third step, uh, proofread my text. So um, just to emphasize again, this solution is just what I've experimented with and what works for me. Uh, you know, if there are any sort of sequence um, that you can tell ChatGPT so that you can get like the response that you want, yeah, you know, feel free to share also. Okay. So if you run this line of codes, uh, if you run this, um, yeah, this code, you will have you know the class that we built to do a fact, eh, not not fact checking, uh, uh, proof reading and also summarization. Okay, so do take note about um, do take note the request that I put in, right? The queries that I put in. So the queries that I put in is specifically sort of um a best effort kind of thing to sort of push ChatGPT in this direction. Like uh, I need you to help me to proofread, you know. So we are gearing it into this direction. Okay. So the paragraph that we'll use is you know uh, yesterday's budget, you know, I'll try to do something related to it. So this is just an episode that I copied from Scripts Time about uh, the recent changes in BTO. Yeah. So I'll run my my own. One running area. Nope. Yeah, okay. I'll run this later. But basically, um, they give me this text. Okay. That basically they are able to summarize the whole long paragraph and manage to give me this summarized text. So basically, um, I'll return a class, this uh, some mini class that helps me to proofread and helps to summarize my text. Okay. So yeah, I think the goal, I think you can see the pattern that's going on here, right? So hopefully by the end of this uh, session, you can think of a use case that maybe you want to do and we'll support you in building a class of your own. Oh, no, sorry, not a class of your own. Um, you know, sort of, you know, functions on your own now so that you can uh, achieve what you want to do. Okay. And lastly, I think um, this might be something that is very, um, you know, of interest to those who are taking any computing related stuff. So we want to build an, a code opti eh, sorry, a code optimizer. So we know that, you know, when we are, okay, I must choose my words correctly here. When we are doing our personal projects, okay, definitely not our assignments, okay, our codes are very imperfect. And many times others have already done what we intend to do and they have really thought through how to optimize these things. So it's very hard to rummage through stack overflow to find the best way to do some things. But we know that ChatGPT has rummaged through everything for us, right? In fact, they have this feature called GitHub Copilot, which provides uh, coding suggestions to programmers. So we know that ChatGPT is quite capable to um, you know, might be capable to, you know, improve any code that we throw at it. So the solutions, the one, two, three steps is the same sort of template that I said, right? You just tell ChatGPT, I want to optimize my code. You preempt them. Then subsequently you can um, put in like, oh, uh, any preferences that you want. And lastly, you just put in your code and ChatGPT will understand what you are trying to do now. Okay. Yeah. So I run my code. Yeah. Oh. Okay, GG, I cannot block already. Okay. Oh, you're using my, my account. Okay, hey, GG. Okay. So basically, yeah, basically, this is the code that I throw into ChatGPT. Yeah, uh, for those, I'm pretty sure 
if you all you know are here in this uh hacker school workshop, I think Python must not be you know very foreign to you all. Also, I hope I hope. So if you take a look at this code here, we know that we are just going through the list and finding the maximum value of the list. All right, finding the maximum value of the list. So this you know is just a very, very simple operation lah. So let's see if ChatGPT could find a more efficient implementation for us. Okay. So um, this is the response that um, our optimizer, you know, sort of uh, functionality gave us. Yeah. So ChatGPT has said, oh, actually you can just use a max function, and this is what they they gave us lah. Okay. So yeah, pretty effective, right? Pretty cool. Yeah. So they managed to help us uh, optimize our code lah. Okay. So hopefully you can see the pattern, you know, hopefully at the end of this lesson, uh, I, I, sorry, at the end of this workshop, you could actually build something of your own lab, all right? So finally, um, hope to draw your interest on this. So let's try to incorporate everything and put it into a Telegram bot, okay? So this is just uh, for demonstration purposes. Um, you need not understand everything that's going on here. Yeah, but uh, yeah, just show you how you might incorporate ChatGPT and Telegram together into a bot, all right? So hopefully, um, even though it might not be what we are doing here, but hopefully we can build a system such that whatever you type inside your Telegram bot, it can go, okay, whatever you type inside a Telegram bot, we can return directly the output of ChatGPT, you know, yeah, from ChatGPT, okay? So firstly, we have to make some changes to our classes. All right, in order to sort of um you know process our responses. Yeah, this might do I have too many requests. Do I have too many requests. Yep. Yep. Okay, we'll solve this later. Yeah. So basically you could take this code chunk. Okay, this code chunk will automatically give you. Um, the, the functionalities that you need to send your message to your Telegram bot. All right. If you need, uh, if you want some tips on how you can get started making your Telegram bot, you can approach us later. Okay. So using that summarized paragraph that uh, we went through here. All right. What happened is uh, we run this again and we save it. We save it, and we actually pass it to our Telegram bot. Okay, so we if we initialize our Telegram bot and we send it a notification, yeah. So at the end, uh, okay, I'll share screen later lah. Yeah, you will have something, uh, in your Telegram bot lah. Yeah. Okay, I'll show it when it's finished lah. Okay. So now you have the time, you know, to go and uh, experiment around. If you have any ideas, you know, you you all can just do it. Um, I see that we are all very comfortable. Oh, sorry, we are all very comfortable sitting around in tables. So if you want, we could actually brainstorm of like ideas together as a table, you know, and try to build something out of it. So just to recap, there are two sort of three main um classes that I've um done for you all. One is the message sender, right? Which sort of sends any message that you type from your your this python to telegram and also our chat gpt class all right um just note that you have to add your login email and password okay and just a tip if you want to scratch test this um this library try to use your own mobile data because i know we are all connected to the same wi-fi and this library is actually rate limited at a rate of 120 requests per minute but i know we are all very enthusiastic and we might hit the rate limit so yeah uh and meanwhile uh meanwhile we have snacks on the house we have snacks on the house so as you are you know sort of thinking of your ideas um you know we have snacks here and we hear your request, we hear your feedback, and we have gone to get the same bakery as we did in which one? Which one? Oh, in victory, yes, in victory. Yeah. So you have the same old goodies here, especially the fruit parts. I think we ordered a bit more. Or is it? Okay, not sure. Yeah. So uh, when you're ready, you can just 
uh, in here lah, to collect your stuff. Okay, then, yeah. yeah, so this time is your time. You are your best teacher, okay? Yeah, if you have any questions, you can just uh, let us know. Okay. So this is uh, a pretty and easy time. So basically, this course that I made, right? Yeah. Um, it's just a very simple course that allows us to um. So the mathematics uh, in that is very clear. Telegram. But the token of chat ID does it represent the telegram? Uh, yes. So I think if you want to try on like switch, um, to the telegram, but there's a but there's a way to extract the token. Yes. yes. Yeah, would you like to learn? I, 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 I can search myself maybe later. Okay. But basically, the token is. In this case, the token is actually tied to what itself. So, okay, okay. Yeah. Then the chat ID is tied to your account. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. The what will actually send the Yeah. This account. This, yeah, so. Uh, it will send the message to this bot and to this account. So um, when it reached Telegram, it will send, oh, it's telling this bot to send a message to this account. Yeah, to like your phone. Yeah, okay, okay. And the chat ID, I can get the ID. Do you know how they actually reverse engineer the thing such that you provide the same credentials but you don't actually have to pay for it? What they do, from what they say is they just script from website now. because the website is so okay, it's not say unlimited but very high limit. Right, so it's not really reverse engineering the API now. It's like mm, it's not like really scripting, scripting for yeah, just, just scripting now. But it's a very um, ingenious way. Yeah, that makes sense. Hacky way, but yeah. Yeah. Do you know how to remain in the same thread so that it doesn't spawn new thread every single time? Oh yes, actually very good question. Uh, this is something that I've tried. And, uh, it's still, if I'm not wrong, the latest update a few hours ago broke this. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, very good point. Now I have too many threads going. Oh, yes, yeah. yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, very good point uh, that your friend has mentioned. Uh, let's see, yeah. Uh, yeah, so um, a few hours ago when I uh, prepared for this workshop, um, actually I'm able to have all the messages right all in one conversation. But I think the latest update just a few hours ago actually broke that. Yeah, so now each message that is sent um, will release one conversation, which might uh, lead to uh, a little less accurate answers. Lah. Yeah, but nonetheless, um, you know, this is still a uh, work in progress. And um, you know, we'll be exploring how to play around a bit to to make it such that you know it will be in the same conversation. Actually, broke it. Is it intentional or are they going? Uh, I think it's intentional. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I'm, I think they'll fix it. Yeah. Because the code wise, it actually it makes sense. Yeah. That it will be in the same conversation. Code wise. Uh, sorry, 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 sorry,
这没有 check 在什么？呃，哪里啊 ？OK， 你。Yeah, for the audience, try to make your phone telegram board. Uh, you can just tell me about then we can get a work group and then figure it out. Yeah, uh, we can use some bot for other or whatever. Yeah, okay, so just let me know like, if you want to learn how to make your own telegram board. Uh, I'll just actually after this, I'll just. Yeah. Oh, we're almost done already. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. Running on Telegram as well. Like actually, initially, but I don't know. Is it because many people are using your account? I think so. I think so. So it becomes um yeah like yeah like I created this account like just before this session, and now it has too many requests in one hour. No, like okay. Because they're using your credentials. Yeah, because everyone using your credentials. Yes, I mean, I don't like. Ah, you can create their own. Oh, well, maybe I could use my. Oh my god! Try it. Try it out. Huh? Yeah, so probably at about eight o'clock, uh, I'll just have a few sort of closing statements. Yeah, then uh, we are free to you know continue to talk about it. You know, uh, um, you know, feel free to take this offline now. Yeah, because uh, as I know, ChatGPT is a bit over the world as well. But for those who haven't finished yet, uh, please um, take your take your uh, you know your your snacks. Yeah. <laughs> 
Jadi kayak orang lain tetap dia harus quit FB. There's really just one like main method for this API is just the doc code. Yeah, like this though. Plus the data. The W not functions to it. But at least the simple one. They say that's good. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's it. Uh, you don't need to worry. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, guys, so now we complete. So if I can take uh two minutes of your attention, okay. So yeah, just to uh conclude, yeah, give you all time to to work on it on your own. Okay. okay. So um yeah, I hope that after this uh workshop. You have learned that you know actually um you know i hope that you all have known a bit more about uh, creativity and have played around with um you know how we can incorporate it into like a simple python uh, project lah. yeah so yeah hope you have uh, understood more about how creativity works especially for those who are not specializing in ai ml natural language processing yeah just you know, on a very surface level um then uh yeah hope you have also discovered some of the available chat apis both uh, the paid version and the the, the third party version and also yeah um hope you have also seen some of the simple projects that do chat gpt these are very 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 simple projects if you look at the board itself actually they have way more functions that can tell you how to like uh, jump between different conversations and actually make your board way more powerful lah. so um i'll leave you all to work on it yourself but um just to shout out you know for hacker schools um this will be the last hacker school for this half of the semester so after week seven it's still tentative but uh we have plans to do things like web3 there's this very interesting cosplay so arduino thing which my bro uh richard is uh, sort of playing for us so props to him for that uh, if I'm not wrong, there's um partnership with statistics and uh, data science club to do our programming, and there'll be much more. Yeah. So, oh, Friday hacks. So just a uh, shout out. If you are free on Friday, there'll be you know talks by um you know our our guest here. Um, you know it'll be kind of late. Yeah, quite a lot of people will be there. So do check it out. Yeah, it'll be at IQ, which is just across the road from from where we are right now so yeah do check us out and there'll be refreshments like we did here but you know more vendor scale i guess yeah so yeah thanks for your time uh for those who want to continue to um, connect with us uh, feel free to stay uh for those who you know want to take this offline you know you can just scan our telegram group to find out more events and also we appreciate your feedback yeah which you can scan on the right okay so uh, help us to finish our phase three. Uh, leave some for me, definitely. Um, but yeah, hope you have a good week ahead. Yeah. Hey, hello. Uh, yes, sure. I think you are in the game. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, that's why you were uh, wondering, like, you said you were on the other side of the other side of the other side. You know Raymond, right? You know him. Yes. Yeah, I think he will show you some ones. Then, yes, yes, yes. Oh, yeah. Nice to see you. This coming weekend. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, I may not be free for this entire day, but during the pocket sometime, I'll be free. Like, so, uh, something out, eh? yeah. Nice to meet you. <laughs> I didn't I didn't expect you to see you here. <laughs> Thank you for the link. Thank you.